it seems to be a, a, a lot of misinformation, I would say, yeah. about inter interracial relationships. So can you break down your view on it? Most definitely, man. I appreciate you know, being able to speak about it. I think just I want to set the stage by saying if you are fortunate enough on this side in your lifetime to find someone who is willing to do life with your messy behind, <laughs> that is a gift regardless of what color they are, regardless of what their background, ethnicity, that's a gift. And I celebrate that wholeheartedly. My concern around the discussion around interracial dating or dating in general is because of, I think, a very public knowledge available dynamic of what's been done between the dynamic between black men and black women, where there's almost been this stoked, for lack of a better word, enmity between black and black women, black men and black women that's been in part by design right, to you've removed men from home. Men from home wasn't just a 60s, 70s thing. Men from home was a slavery thing. It, 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 was, it, it, it spans centuries. And so what does that do, right? It, 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 it distorts the relationship between the, the other, right? It, it builds in resentment, pain, hurt over generations. It recreates the dynamic of family and so now you have a whole generations of brothers and sisters who don't necessarily relate to each other in the way that they were intended to. So the concern becomes, why is this the case? And there's information, intentional inf the disinformation around why it's the case. Is it because brothers are just out here marrying other people? And it's affirming this abandonment dynamic of brothers don't love us. Brothers are not here for us. Brothers are not worthy. Brothers are something to be feared. Brothers are somebody you can't build with. Brothers are everything that the society, the society, the systematic, I call genius evil of what's happened, particularly in this country, has come to tell you is just like, yeah, they're the super predators. Yeah, they're that. Because you also have a heart and you're human if you're a sister and dad was not there. There's an internalized, whether you're conscious of it or not, resentment, abandonment complex. So you feel like, Brothers ain't here because they don't want to be here because I'm not love. You're saying I don't love and you love those other people. But the statistical reality, it's almost like they talk about the saying like information doesn't change people, inspiration does. You could be the most logical one plus one equals two. But if you're emotionally invested into something, it doesn't matter. And so even statistically, black men and black women, there's not a black love issue. Statistically, there's not. 90%, brothers like 88%, 86%, sisters like 91%, 89%. And people split hairs and be like, oh, so like by and large, we are marrying each other, by and large. But then there's this view to say, well, the numbers, or the, it's a numbers issue, and like there's not enough black men for black sisters, uh, for, for sisters. It's like, wait, every race has this, <laughs> has this, dis ha has this disparity. Yeah. Every race has more educated women than men. Every, every, every race has more women than men. Every race, right? Now, it doesn't take away the, the, the statistical reality of, of what's happened because of uh, uh, public incarceration, all those different things, but that's a common dynamic right, across the board. And so now, you, but that's by design, because it's wanting you to say, look, look at what they're doing to you. This is why they're not valuable. This is, uh, this is why you have this dynamic happening. Then you have things that I think are more insidious that actually really, it, it really bothers me, which is since the beginning of time, brothers have had to see their families broken apart. Well, then slavery, they've, they've seen, why do you think, people talk about a oh, mixed race. Do you understand? We all know. Why are often there so many mixed race brothers and sisters here in the West when even integration wasn't cool? Because people were raped. People were taken. There were sisters were taken and were sleeping with the one. Brothers have had to see that for time, from time in memoriam, right? And so, so you have this dynamic where the story is being told that these brothers are just going for white women. Every statistical reality shows you that disproportionately brothers and sisters love each other. But now, and so now you have this, now you have a whole dynamic now where if you're trying to uh, undermine a community, you do it with family. You also have to take into account that at the end of the day, there's a divine anchoring or divine design of men and women. Brothers have been economically castrated. I was going to tell you, I was waiting for you to get to that point, right? Brother. Um, the ability to earn. In American society, a manhood is based on your ability to provide. Yeah. So, systematically, <laughs> if you're not able to provide, like, 
I just, you know, I give things I could provide for my family. But I also think about sometimes, like, how would I feel, like, as a man if I couldn't provide for my family? Bro. You know, like, how, how would I feel? And I just feel so broken and embarrassed, in a sense. And there's a flip side. You have a lot of men that don't believe they can provide for their family regardless because they grew up in that environment. Mm-hmm. They don't feel mm-hmm. that we have to understand that regards to, like, you never saw someone do it, and they're not confident enough to do it. And I've seen situations where men self-sabotage themselves from certain things because they just don't believe they can do it. That's a, like a factor we have to factor. That's the thing we have to factor in regards to black men, the role of their environment and that just psychology that they have from growing up in this environment that you're just nothing and you're not capable of anything. Because you get it from the system and you get it from the sisters. Or I don't want to say the sisters, you get it from your community. Yeah, man. You speak, you're, you're spot on, man. I mean, that's the reality for many brothers right now. They can't provide it and they feel impotent. They feel like they lack value. This is why suicide rates are what they are. You see this because I do believe we're called to be providers. It is not limit, just limited to finances, but ultimately one of the primary ways that you communicate care for family is being able to provide, to do something. On top of that, it's not just innate in brothers to want to do that. That's all, and there's also an innate expectation in sisters to see you in a divine light that that is the provider. And what's interesting, and which is, is interesting, is that even in this environment where things have shifted, even if that, if that woman is not, let's say, traditional, quote unquote, there's still the expectation, which is the, the irony, <laughs> which shows you that there's something to that. Whether or not she's earning or not, she still has the expectation that she would provide. You don't hear brothers talking the same way. You don't hear brothers saying, like, I hope she's taller than me. I hope, because there's something in us that we bring to it. So to your point, it's destabilizing, it's, it's, it's crushing, right, to be able to feel that. On top of that, you have this new dynamic which is almost saying like there's no distinct roles or expectations. So sometimes they're even being taught that you don't have to provide, you, you guys go, for, you know, you roll and roll. Of course, all throughout time, the big view is that, oh, men were providing and women weren't working. Particularly in the black community, it was a mix. Women were, we were still going, working, washing toilets and doing things, they were still doing work. Right? But there still wasn't a dynamic whether he worked on the, 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 the plant or not. There was still a dynamic of like, I see value of you beyond just this. Yeah, I think that's the biggest shift with this generation in regards to that. They totally disregard the man based on his economic ability. Because, he, because they, hadn't, they, they didn't have the opportunity or the fortunate opportunity to learn about the value by seeing it themselves. Yeah. And so if all you see is, if all he was reduced to was the check, was the check or the ability to, to procreate and create me or facilitate my life, then when you're going into the world, that's all, you've limited men to that. So that's why it's like, it's not just provision, it's protection. It's also like, it's also direction, vision. It's also correction, like correction, divine correction of children, structure. It's, it's more than that. But, <laughs> but all right, all right. So, so you know white male suicide is skyrocketing yeah. because they're struggling because a lot of these men they're not doing better than the, they won't do better than the previous generation. They just can't deal with it because their whole place in society is, is, is kind of topsy-turvy too. But me and my brother talk about this a lot, right? That some people, especially if they have a solid woman or I'll say a conscious woman, you can supplement the income with guidance of the children, support of her cooking and cleaning, other things. What happens with a lot of men is that they're so stuck in this provision thing and the society is not allowing them to provide in that way and they're not kind of seeing how else can we make this thing. I, I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. They're not seeing how can we how can we win the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From a sports term, I guess. Like You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. bro, you're off today. You can't. Are you going to help defense? Are you just going to cheer on the bench? There are other things you can do to support the team. Exactly. And I think that's where we need to transition to say, you may have, have households where, yes, men make money. You may have households where the brother just doesn't have skill and may live in an area where he can't earn. Mm-hmm. But what else can you do to help the family thrive? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, brother, to this point, man, I mean, I can't help, but this is often for me the invitation to faith. Because if your value is going to be dependent upon what you can do, and there are times when you can't, then you're going to be working out your value. And it's going to be a fluctuating thing versus my value is endowed and it doesn't matter whether or not I have a job, I don't have a job, I, don't, I still have a motivation because I'm, I'm coming, I'm working from value, not for it, right? 
And I think that's difficult. I think to your point, it's a dual flow. And if I, I'm speaking to a brother practically, I'm saying at the end of the day, nobody's going to do it for you. You know, you should want to be able to care for yourself. But I would start both with the spiritual to say, number one, you are valuable. That's not a question, right? That's a hard thing, but that's a faith thing. When you don't feel your circumstances validate that, you have to know outside of your circumstances that you are valuable. But why? Two, to your point, is also your decision. I, I, I believe part of being a man is accountability. I call biblical, you know, biblical man, I talk about it's accountability. God talked to Adam, man. Like, he was like, where are y'all? Like, I think that's part of what is distinguishes brothers, is that you're called to be accountable. The wife you choose, right? The woman I choose, right? Does she value me? I remember I used to struggle with the, even the idea of like, man, ministry. And like, man, if I do a ministry, then does somebody value that? Right? Will they look at me as less than, right? Versus when I was investing in banking or doing consulting and I'm making all this and I'm doing all that, right? Then I need to be with a woman who actually values that. Because to your point, you could see the value, but it will be difficult, not impossible, if the other person is just like, I know you're here trying to clean and do that, but brother, brother, uh, T-Mobile don't take cleaning, right? Like such and such don't take, right? And again, I would still push that man to say, hey, you, you, you should be able to take care of yourself. You should be doing that. Do what you got to do at, by any means necessary, right? So if you have a license, you have this, drive Uber, drive this. There's no excuse. Accountability. Accountability.